Hi, today I'm going to work through this kinematics question. It's come from the uh, 2016, so this was the first time this particular uh, new specification was sat. And the question has changed a little bit. Um, this was quite an interesting one. It's from the later stage of the paper, which uh, makes it often a little bit harder than some of the ones that have come before it. It features a lovely infographic down here. Um, and I'll talk you through how to take something which looks on the surface to be quite challenging, break it down into small pieces and make it quite um, acceptable in the end. Now, this question uh, initially is asking us to consider how projectiles behave in uh, gravitational fields. So the gravitational field is going to give us a change in the y direction, but no change in the x direction. So it wants me to explain how it will move, what the effect will be on the velocity, as it goes through its flight. So I'm going to say that the velocity in the x direction, that's across the page this way, will not change because there is no force in this direction. Now, that's nice, we've spotted no force. We've kind of set ourselves up ready for the next part of the question, which is what's going to happen in the y. So the velocity in the y will change because the force of gravity will affect the uh, motion. The next part of this question wants us to use some information from this infographic down here. They want us to calculate the horizontal velocity of the lander as it came through this bounce here. And they're giving us two important pieces of information. The first, which we'll come back to in a second, is the fact that it's travelled one kilometre. The other is the time that it's got written inside this loop here, which is one hour and 50 minutes. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I like to work in seconds, is turn this into seconds. So one hour is 3,600 seconds. That's something I've learnt. It's 60 times 60 if you want to try it for yourself. And we've got whatever 50 minutes times 60 is. So I'm going to pop that in here, like this. And I've worked those out already uh, to be, uh, this one here is uh, 3,000, uh, and this one is 3,600. So that gives us 6,600 seconds. And then I'm going to do uh, speed uh, equals distance over time, just like I would have done at GCSE. And when I solve that, I end up with 1,000 meters over uh, 6,600 seconds. And when I do that, I get an answer of 0.15 meters per second. Okay, so I'm going to flip over now uh, for the next part of the question. I'm just going to slide this one up, though, because we'll need some of the stuff from this infographic. So I'm just going to slide it up and keep it somewhere handy. Now it says, by considering the first bounce, show the value of acceleration due to gravity on the comet is. So uh, what I've chosen to do for this one is from my formula sheet, I'm going to use the equation x equals ut plus one half a t squared. Now, you might be a bit nervous about doing this because you don't know what u is. Um, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically going to cheat and I'm going to have a bit of a think. And now I know that the speed, the velocity, I should say, at this point here is going to be zero. Um, so I'm going to consider it falling from this midpoint here. So I'm going to drop the lander down through this space here on the diagram. So from the top of the arc, sorry, I'll move that down. So from the top of the arc up here down onto the comet's surface. So the distance uh, there is going to be 1,000 metres again from before. 
I'll tell you what, I'll cross that out, that's just going to confuse it. Um, U is going to be zero. Now time is an interesting one because we've just worked out that the time is 6,600 seconds for the whole of the loop, but I'm only talking now about half of it. So I'm going to multiply that zero by 3,300, which is half of 6,600. I chuck that in brackets so it's all together, plus a half of A, which I don't know, uh, times the same 3,300 times, oh sorry, squared I should say. Okay, now what's quite nice is 0 times 3,300 is 0, so I can get rid of that, leaving me just with 1,000 is equal to a half of uh, 3,300 squared a, so times by A. Okay, just brought the A out from here uh, to tidy it up, make it look a little bit neater. So I'm now going to put this into my calculator and solve it, and I get that to be 2,000, sorry, quite a lot actually, 2722500A. Still got my 1,000 over here. I'm going to rearrange that, so I've got 1,000 over two seven two two five zero zero that equals a therefore a is equal to naught point naught 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 one eight meters per second now the exam board wanted me to show that it's naught point naught 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 two meters per second so i've gone further than that i've shown them that that number there would round to that, I've got an extra significant figure in. So the next part of the question wants us to show that um, the vertical velocity of the, la the lander immediately after its first bounce is going to be 60% of its escape velocity. So um, to do this, I'm going to use another one of the kinematics equations. This time I'm going to use V equals U plus AT. And I'm going to define uh, V as the top of that bounce. Uh, a bit like I cheated earlier and, and only worried about half of this. So I'm going to say that V is up here, and that makes U down here. Uh, time is going to be the same 3,300 seconds that we uh, used in the last question. Uh, so just have to fill it in. I've got acceleration now from up here, so I can use that in this equation. So V is 0, U is my unknown, plus A is 0 0.0002 times uh, my time, which was 3300. Zero, zero. No squared this time, remember, of course. Now, I'm going to chuck that lot in brackets. Um, so at this point, you could choose to rearrange it. You could bring it over to this side if you wanted to, uh, but I'm going to leave it over here. Um, I've just realized something, actually. I've uh, forgotten that this acceleration is going to be acting downwards, so it should have a minus sign that goes with it. Um, it's going to look a little bit messy, but it's something I've remembered last minute, unfortunately. So uh, 0 equals uh, u plus, and then if I multiply all of that lot together, I get minus 0 0.66. Okay, I'm going to keep it in its brackets for now, because I want you to remember that we've got a plus here, and then we've got this minus I finally remembered over here. Okay, So what will happen is, as I take this over to this side to leave the u on its own, I'm going to end up with 0 minus uh, minus 0, sorry, I'm going to put the point in the wrong place, point 0.66 is equal to u. Okay, now if you remember a minus minus is a plus, so this is going to give me 0 0.66 is equal to u. Okay, now it's tempting to stop there, but this question is out of three marks, not out of two. If you, if you leave it there, you'll only score two of those three marks. So in order to score that first one, we have a third mark, we have to go back and we have to consider this 60%. So we need to go back to the infographic, and it tells me just about here that this thing was, um, the escape velocity is 88 centimeters per second. So I need to convert that into meters per second, uh, or the other way around, convert my answer into me, uh, centimeters per second, and solve it from there. Um, so we'll do 0 0.66 times 100, and that will give me 66 centimetres per second. So I've just swapped this 
into centimeters per second. It was meters per second down here. And then I'm going to do um, 66 uh, divided by 88 from my infographic, and that's going to equal 0.75. Now, if you want, you can times that by 100 and call it 75%. So 75% is much bigger than 60%, so we're nice and happy with that one. And then the final question is um, considering the implications of science. Now, there are so many answers to this final bit. I'm not going to write you one out here, but it wants you to talk about whether or not you think it's beneficial or has been too expensive and not a good use of those funds. This question is usually done very well by students because they're, they're able uh, to talk at, at length about the, the benefits or drawbacks of certain scientific investments. Okay, I hope you have found this video useful.